Hello everyone, today we are going to show you uh, how we are going to paint our intake pipe hoses. So a lot of times when you're going to order intake pipe hoses for different manufacturers, you're going to get them and they may or may not be available in certain finishes. Uh, so today we're going to show you uh, as part of our engine rebuild and dress up that we need to get these pipes that are uh, coated uh, silver or aluminum uh, to a black with a mirror finish. So we're going to walk you through the products, the process, and you'll be able to see it uh, firsthand what it looks like now all the way to what it's going to look like here in a little bit. So uh, we have a few things here and we are going to show you again here. We are working on an intake uh, pipe that is going on the Volvo, but very similar to a lot of the intake pipes that you may get uh, for any vehicle, really. Um, some tools that we're going to use is going to be a little scuff pad here, right? So we're going to go ahead and use this, scuff this down, make sure that it's all cleaned up. Any debris, nice, even. Uh, roughed up surface that our product is going to stick to. After that, we'll go ahead and do a wipe down with alcohol to make sure you get any grease and grit, things of that nature off so that this thing is ready to go. Um, you can use a primer uh, if you want to. We may do that on some of our other pipes. In this situation, there's already a powder coat that is on here. So after scuffing it down, that should be sufficient or act as our base coat. Um, and then uh, down at the local paint shop, we went down and got a uh, color match. So we just gave them a paint code for Volvo uh, Blackstone 019. And then they mix it up and uh, it is in there ready to go. And uh, since we are going to do a buff and a sand and a mirror finish, mirror black finish on these, instead of using something like an off the shelf dupli color, um, engine gloss, we want to go with something that's going to have uh, a little bit more thickness, a little bit more um, substance to it so that we can actually do a good buff out and uh, that is going to be requiring a good sand on the clear coat. So we use this uh, also from the local paint store. You can get this on uh, Amazon or ship to you from other retailers as well. It's a lot cheaper that way. Uh, and it's important to note that shelf life on this one is only about two days after you uh, initiate the hardener. So uh, important to note, this clear coat does have hardener built into it. And uh, you take your little red button, we'll see that later. We pop the bottom and then we shake it up. That's gonna release the hardener into the product. And then once it's done that, again, two days tops before the product is no longer gonna be usable. So we try to save up as many things as we need to paint, some trim pieces, some other things, because we want to get the most out of this can. I think locally we spend $35 or something like that. Again, Amazon or eBay, about half the price, uh, which we will start uh, purchasing from online retailers. But uh, I feel like with what we have here, we're probably going to have a little bit left over that is going to go to waste. But with the built-in hardener, it really gives a thick, thick clear coat on there so that you can really do a, a solid sanding down so that you can then do the polish and buff mirror finish back up. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to do our initial scuff with the uh, scuff pad on our uh, product here. So we're going to go ahead and get some gloves on and then we'll bring you back in. We are back. So uh, with this tube, again, mention that it already has a powder coating on it, so we're not going to take that all off. The bond is pretty good, and we're going to use that to act as our primer. But we do want to get a little scuff up on there, and as we're doing it, we can see that it's starting to uh, get you an angle. Try it's starting to get those kind of scuff and scratches in there so that it gives the paint a really good area to hold on to. So you want to make sure we hit all surfaces um, and just make sure it is as clean and smooth after the scuff process so that it is ready to go on for a proper cleaning. 
So we're gonna go ahead and scuff all these up and then we'll bring you back for the next segment, which is gonna be just uh, doing an alcohol swab to clean these up. Okay, so we are back and this thing is pretty well scuffed up. Um, we got scratches all the way through there. So we know that it is ready for cleaning. So the next thing we do is get a nice clean rag and uh, let's go ahead and I like to just douse this thing down. Not so that it's dripping through, but that you have a nice good amount on there. And then just wipe the entire surface. All the little nooks, the crannies, the weird angles, because that is gonna be where you may have a problem with paint sticking. So especially during the sanding process, you wanna make sure to hit those areas really well, give it some nice pressure, and make sure that you see that everything is getting wet with the alcohol. And uh, then at that point, try not to touch it, but we'll just set this guy aside and uh, go on and uh, clean up the rest of the stuff that we're painting uh, in this video. And then uh, we'll bring you back and talk about the actual paint and uh, lay down our first layer after this alcohol has dried up for maybe about eh, 10 minutes or so. Ready to paint. All of our items are cleaned up. Uh, so at this point, we have done the scuff. We have done the full alcohol bath. Next thing we're going to do, and even if you're not going for uh, a mirror finish, if you're using, uh, you know, something off the shelf like uh, like uh, this, uh, or if you're using a professional automotive grade uh, paint, either way, let's make sure that you get this thing shaken up. Uh, for the first use, I like to do, uh, you know, if you could do 120 seconds, 60 uh, in 60, so about you know two minutes or so, um, and get this thing shaken up so that everything is really uh, mixed up. That's really important too. Uh, if you're using, uh, for example, this is a can of our uh, metallic blue for the exterior. If it has metallic or pearl flake, you definitely need to, if you're in an aerosol, shake that thing up. You want all of the particles and the shine to get evenly dispersed so that it's not just sitting on the bottom. Um, and by the time you start, it's a nice finish. And by the time you finish, then it's real heavy with the metallic and, and uneven. So we're gonna shake this up for two minutes and then we're gonna come by. Uh, the good thing is with this pipe that we're painting here to show you, we're gonna be able to do it in one sitting, right? We're not gonna to have to worry about the edge because the silicone hose goes up on there uh, and we're gonna get all the way around and up. Uh, same thing with our, our cup holder bezel. With uh, the other pipe that we are painting, it does have a weird angle where it won't stand up by itself. We have it propped on a box, which means we're gonna to have to kind of do that in two sections. Or before we come back, we may actually just hang that um, rather than having it have a dead spot that we have to then flip, wait for it to dry, apply a second coat. So we're probably gonna actually hang that piece and then uh, we'll come back and uh, show you um, us popping the cap off of this and then showing you our gentle spray stream uh, to get the first base coat down. We're back, we are shooken up with our back pipe. You can kind of see it out of frame. Uh, what we were actually able to do was stuff a uh, can of spray paint into the pipe put an angle, do the same on the other side, which is off screen. And now it is 100% free floating in the air. So we're gonna be able to paint that uh, simply by passing without having to flip, without having to hang, turn, anything like that. So now that we're shaking up, we always do it. You don't wanna do a test spray on your on your product uh, in case uh, you got some uh, spurts or squirts. So what I like to do, just kinda make sure that it's working on a table or on a piece of cardboard or something like that, right? So uh, with most spray paint cans, they're gonna tell you, and then really for a good finish, six to eight inches away, even passes. And uh, we want to make sure not to lay it on too thick. We're not trying to finish this in one coat. We're gonna knock it and uh, it's not gonna look like much, but we're gonna let that kind of settle in. Uh, as they call the flash tie, and then we're gonna come back and add and add and add so that we don't risk getting any drips, because once you get drips, you're not happy with them. 
you gotta go back to step one. You gotta let this stuff dry and then you gotta sand it. And so, uh, you know, get some, some test sprays on something, get familiar with the, uh, the spray on this particular nozzle that you may have on the actual can and then go from there. So um, again, six to eight, just slow passes, making sure to start and finish past the item. All right. And we see a little bit of coverage going on. And that's fine. Again, we're not trying to get this whole thing black in one pass. We're just trying to start getting some product on there and definitely avoiding any drips, any runs. Maybe tempting to say, eh, just a little more, just a little more. But you'll thank yourself when you don't have any runs in any of your uh, pieces and you don't have to start over from the beginning. So we're gonna finish up our uh, very first just initial kind of touch coat on all of these. And then we'll bring you back as we get ready for our second. Probably gonna do three or four on here, just a really slow build up. Okay, it's been a few minutes, uh, about 10 or so, uh, eight. We're gonna go ahead and pass through again. Again, very light. Making sure to get all the angles. The good thing about oops, this table is we can get on it and we can walk around so we can kind of get all the stuff, all the angles we need to hit to make sure that we get good even coat all the way around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep going uh, on the rest of this. We're probably gonna do a third, a fourth until it dries uh, in its flash time and just has a really solid even coverage on everything. And then we will uh, bring you back for the clear process. Okay, we're back. We dusted our whole can of base coat. And you may be looking, well, ah, that's not that shiny. I forgot to mention the base coat that we got was a single stage, which just does not have clear in it. And that's why we have our separate clear here. So uh, if it looks a little rough, doesn't look too shiny. That is expected because here on the clear coat pass is where we are going to see all of the magic happen. So again, this is a uh, two stage uh, clear coat or uh, hardener built in. So what we do is we take this little button off of the top and we are going to set it down here on this little tab or pin on the bottom. And then we are going to pop it and sometimes we do this on a floor. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we got that. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, shake this up. I'm gonna keep this pressed down to make sure all the product can go out and mix through here. And then we will bring you back and show you uh, our first pass on the clear. Everything has been shaken. Uh, it is noted, uh, you can't really see, but uh, explosive, flammable, and death. Make sure you're wearing a mask for this stuff. This stuff is uh, heavy duty stuff, um, but we've shaken it all up again. Uh, we did a test spray, but we'll show you there is a very strong and uh, dense cloud that comes out of these ones. We're gonna see some really good coverage. So we'll do a test spray and then we'll do our initial pass. Uh, and then same thing, we are going to uh, bring you back after we've uh, pretty much exhausted this can. Again, uh, the shelf life on this, once we have mixed the hardener in, 48 hours, two days, and we don't have anything else to uh, paint. So we're gonna get a very, very thick coat on our three items here so that we can be extra generous when we go on to the sanding process on these. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let's get at it. And right away, you can see how much that shine is starting to come out. 
Still gonna be a little bumpy, uh, which is fine. That's where the color sand and buff comes into play. A lot of times people will just leave it at that. That's fine. Um, you know, most new cars come out of the factory without a color sand and buff, which is why you have a really high gloss, but you don't have that mirror finish. So um, we're gonna continue again uh, with this and we will do probably three or four coats, which will eliminate all the product in the can. And then we will bring you back to see. Gloss stage is completed or clear coat stage. So we dusted that whole can uh, between our three parts. And now you can start to see that there is a good shine on this. Not mirror finish, maybe fuzzy mirror. But uh, we are now going to let this sit for eh, maybe about two, three days, something like that. Really let this product uh, cure on here. And then we'll bring you back for our color sand and buff on there. Okay, so it has been actually about seven days. This clear is really cured on there. Uh, one of the tests I like to do a couple days in, really press hard uh, and see if you can get a thumbprint on there. And uh, we can't, so this is ready to go. We have our uh, assortment of sandpaper. It's gonna be 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000 in that sequence. So what we're gonna do is we have a bucket. We're gonna keep it wet. We're going to start with our 1,500 and we are just gonna start grinding off this top layer of clear uh, until we get a nice haze on there. Uh, and we're gonna make that uniform throughout the whole thing. So we'll bring you back after we've done that to show you what that looks like before we move on to the next stage, next stage, all the way up. By the time we get done with 3000, this thing is gonna be very hazy, very foggy, but it should be consistently smooth, no orange peel, and then ready for our final buffing. Okay, so this is on our first layer, the 1500, and you can see as we go across, you're going to see this white residue, milky residue kind of coming off. And uh, what that is, is that is the clear coat actually sanding out. So I like to keep a dry rag and then uh, wipe it off every so often until it's completely dry. And you will then see this is the final product that you want. We don't want any of this shine left on there. Uh, we want to get it down to all of this haze. And that is when we know that we are ready to move on to the next layer. Uh, so we'll just keep working this and working down until the whole thing looks like this. And then we'll bring you back on the next layer of 2000, 2500, 3000, where it will actually start taking these super fine scratches out. By the time we get to 3000, there should be no scratches. It's completely hazy and then we'll be ready to get the buff, which will bring out the finish. Okay, so we are done with the 15. You can see it's pretty hazy now. We still have a little bit of orange peel that we are going to go through and hit. Um, the next stage, the 2000, the 25, should start to take this out. We're not gonna spend too much time over here because the hose coupler comes over and we wanna stay away from any edges so that we don't burn uh, and get down to the metal. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this again and keep working this stuff out. And then we'll bring you back after we've done the 2000. Okay, so we've just finished up with the 3000. You can see that we have no orange peel left on this whatsoever. Uh, we were very delicate around kind of the edges. We started to burn a little here. We're gonna touch that up later. Uh, and we stayed away from these edges because again, the hose coupler is gonna cover all that. But essentially, Hazy is what we want, but this is as smooth as as, uh, as you can believe. Uh, that was the 3000, so now we're gonna uh, move on to the three-step buffing process, which is going to be uh, stage one, the rubbing compound, stage two, kind of the medium cut, and then stage three, the polish. So we'll bring you back on those and let you see each phase until this thing is uh, a mirror here shortly. Okay, so we have uh, we have full uh, buffers and, and all that, but for smaller pieces, what we'll do is we'll just use the drill and these little attachments, which are a lot easier than holding on to a buffing tool that is bigger than the piece you're actually buffing. So we have our different pads here, and we're gonna start again with stage one, which will be the rubbing compound. Um, 3M does have the stage one in this, but uh, didn't have it in stock locally. The cut uh, rubbing compound here, the 3M same brand, seems to work pretty well anyways. Uh, and then we'll switch pads, we'll go up to 
stage two, which is just gonna be the machine polish. And then the final stage is gonna be the ultra fine machine polish. So what we're gonna do is we'll start off putting our first pad on there and then we're gonna get this thing nice and juicy. And then we're just gonna pretty much work this in uh, throughout the area. And we'll start to see that uh, even the scratches um, and some of the imperfections that are still left on here are gonna start to come out. Uh, the haze is gonna start to disappear. And by the time we get to three, this should be a mirror. Okay, so pretty much we have the product spread on the applicator and then we just go ahead and turn the speed down and we're just gonna go through and work the area, do a couple passes, maybe three or four, uh, you know, this way, three or four, you kinda, kinda hit it from every angle. So uh, we'll bring you back after we're done doing uh, stage one on all of these. We are done with stage one, the rubbing compound. You can already kind of see that mirror finish coming out, but we still see some mild sand scratches and little imperfections. So we're gonna just uh, continue on to our uh, two and three, but for comparison, if we look at the other pipe that has not been treated yet, you'll remember, that's kind of what we were at to just the first stage with that gloss finish. Okay, so we have just finished stage two of the uh, 3M Perfect It kit, uh, which is the machine polish. We can already see that shine is coming out a lot more compared to our, again, sample piece, which is completely dull. And then we come over here and we can see that finish. I mean, it is so clean. You can, you can read my shirt. So uh, we're gonna go on to the very last stage, which would be three. And uh, that should uh, wrap this guy up. Okay, stage three is done. Uh, that is pretty much it. What do you think? Mirror finish started from this, right? To that. And again, we didn't spend too much time here because the... Uh, those couplers go in there, but that is a mirror crystal clear finish. So we'll go ahead and uh, finish up the other one, but uh, that kind of takes you through the process.